All right, we are going to show here what the Godhead is defined from Scripture as far as Jesus being the body, the Father being the soul, and the Holy Ghost being the Spirit. I'm going to prove, to, prove it to you here in this study. Okay, first we're going to go over the body. Start out in Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. You know, an interesting little point there, verse 10, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven. If the Godhead is three separate persons, does the Father and the Spirit both bow to Jesus? For you Trinity wing nuts out there? You got yourself a weird problem there. Uh, no. The only separation that happens up there in heaven why Jesus sits at the right hand is because He is the body. He took upon Him the form of a servant. Flesh. A physical body. That's what Jesus has. All right? He sits at the right hand of the Father, the soul, the flesh, sitting here, until prophecies of Scripture are complete. Then they become one into eternity. Again, I proved that in my other study on the, you know, why is Jesus, <coughs> excuse me, why is Jesus seated at the right hand of the Father? Showed the Scriptures. Two-part study on that, showing the Scriptures, which my enemies can't handle. Go to Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, image of his person, speaking about Jesus being the image of the Father's person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Okay? Like I said, covered it in my other big study on the whole thing there. But you see, Jesus Christ is the body. He's the express image of the Father. And again, I've shown that you know, multiple times. God the Father is actually called the invisible God at one point in time. Why? Because he's the soul. I'm going to show you that here in this little study here. All right? But go down to verse 8. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 8. But unto the Son he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Now, it's so funny. Because the Trinitarians will take this and they'll say, See, this is a scripture that proves God the Son. That Jesus is God the Son because the Father says to him, Thy throne, O God. So that proves God the Son. Well, first of all, I'd like to point out the fact that the word the Son does not appear there. He doesn't say, Thy throne, O God the Son. He doesn't say that. Point number one. Point number two is, if he is saying, Jesus, you're God, what does that say about the Father? That he is a separate God? See, because the Trinitarians, they say, oh no, they're just, they're all one God, three separate people, but one God. Well, then how does that work? See, it just, it's so, it's so messed up. Jesus is God. The Father is God. The Holy Ghost is God. One God. Show me in Scripture where it says, anywhere in Scripture where it says that there are three gods in heaven. Scripture after Scripture, there is one God. Beside me there is no God. I know not any. Scripture after Scripture. One God. One God. One God. Where in the Bible does it say that there are three? Three gods. It doesn't. So can Jesus hold the title of God? Yes. That's not the Father somehow saying to Jesus, you're somehow a separate title God than I am. It's not saying that. But let's continue. Let's go next to the soul. I've already covered a lot of these, you know, the arguments back and forth on this whole Godhead versus Trinity thing, so I'm not going to be going over everything in this study. I've already destroyed the arguments of every Trinity, Trinitarian, whatever you want to call them out there, Catholic. They just can't handle the Scriptures, that's all. 
So I'm not going to be going over everything, but you know, you can watch the other studies if you really want to know the truth on this issue. Matthew chapter 12, verse 18. The job of this video, what I'm trying to prove to you, is showing you that Jesus Christ is obviously the physical body of the Godhead. Showed you that from the scriptures. Matthew chapter 12, verse 18. Behold my servant whom I have chosen, my beloved in whom my soul is well pleased. It's a quotation from the Old Testament here, but it says, in whom my soul is well pleased. Remember that statement. I will put my spirit upon him and he shall show judgment to the Gentiles. Okay? Go to Matthew chapter 17. Matthew chapter 17, verse 5. All right, here Jesus is being... He's there on the Mount of Transfiguration. He's transfigured before them. Look what happens. Matthew chapter 17, verse 5. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud, which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. We just read that it's the soul that's well pleased. And he says, Hear ye him. All right. Who was it speaking? The soul in heaven. The Father speaks down about Jesus Christ. And he says, My Son, in whom I am well pleased. Matthew chapter 3. Back there. Matthew chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove. He was not a dove, descending like a dove. And lighting upon him, and lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. But Matthew chapter 12, verse 18 says, In whom my soul is well pleased. See, and there's other verses of Scripture we could go over, but like I said, I've done the other studies. Um, the Father is the soul of the Godhead. Just plain and simple. You say, what about the Spirit? You saw the Spirit of God there descending like a dove. What about that? Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5, verses 3 through 4. But Peter said, Ananias, why hath Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost, and to keep back part of the price of the land? Okay, the Holy Ghost. Verse 4. Whilst it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God the Spirit. No, it doesn't say that. It says, unto God. Again, you know, these Trinitarians are so stupid. They'll come along and they'll say, well, see, this proves God the Spirit. Because it says up here in verse 3, it's Holy Ghost. It's the Holy Spirit is another name for Him. Down here it says, God. So it's God the Holy Spirit. <laughs> uh, no, you liar. It doesn't say that. It's God. Just like Hebrews chapter 1, verse 8 calls Jesus Christ God. It doesn't call Him God the Son which is distinct from God the Father and God the Spirit, but they're all just one God. <laughs> you know? I mean, these, these people have mental disabilities up there. Okay? They don't quite get things. Right? Um, the mental disability is called mind of flesh. No Holy Spirit to show them truth. <laughs> it's incredible. But uh, right there you see it. Again, you know, let me show you another verse here. You say, well, how do, how do you explain this? See, because this is showing that, that you know, the Holy Ghost is, is God. It's the God, the Spirit. Keep reading. Uh, go down to verse 9, actually. Then Peter said unto her, How is it that ye have agreed together to tempt the Spirit of the Lord? There are no verses of Scripture that prove that the Holy Ghost is the Spirit of the Lord. Uh, really? Let's finish the verse. Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door, and shall carry thee out. Hmm. So, verse 3, the Holy Ghost. Verse 4, he's called God. And then in verse 9, he's called the Spirit of the Lord. 
and I get called a heretic because I teach the biblical Godhead that Jesus is the body, the Father in whom my soul is well pleased, speaking down from heaven. And now the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost is the Spirit of the Lord. Right there it's proven. The biblical Godhead. Jesus the body, the Father the soul, the Holy Ghost the Spirit. These three are one. If you believe anything else, you believe a pagan heresy. You have a, a false idol for a God. It's just as simple as that.